Well, okay, you, we're all ready. What you ain't your... left in 48 years, so don't leave now. <laughs> okay, what is your full name? Gerald John Kamau. And who were your parents? Reg Kamau and uh, Elizabeth Kamau. Okay, and what was your mother's maiden name? Uh, Dugal. Okay, and who were your grandparents? Uh, Arthur Dugal and uh, Helen Dugal and uh, Ned Kamau and Helen Kamau. Okay, and when were you born? In 1933. And where were you born? Just up the road here, a couple hundred yards. Okay, how large was your family? Well, there was six, six of us, three boys and three girls. Okay, and where do you fit in in the family? I'm the oldest one. Okay, what did your father do for a living? Oh, uh, just labor work in the woods and whatever he could get. Okay, can you describe your mother's typical work day? Oh my oh. God, it would be horrible. <laughs> Them days, no electric lights, washing by hand, making bread, and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, what was a typical school day like for you? Well, like any other kid, I suppose, I didn't go to school that long. Grade four, that's all. Okay, what kinds of things did you have to memorize in school? Well, the most of my, what I had to do, I'd read them on, or would write them on my hand or on my wrist and then forget where, where it was. <laughs> okay, how are you disciplined in school? Uh, them days, you didn't get away with anything. You know, even the teacher either had a strap or a switch. And they'd, if you'd done something, they'd line you up, maybe eight, ten little boys, and uh, she start from the first to try to get the information what she wanted. And she had no... Uh, Miss Marshall up here, she was a, a good teacher. She had a, a strap made out of a driving... Uh, driving uh, the trace off a driving wagon horse, and I suppose it was about foot, foot and a half, two feet long, and it was double sewed, about that thick. And when she hit you with that, you know, just, just like hitting you with a two before. Gerald, are you hot? <laughs> Don't be nervous. No, no, I believe my sugar's going down. I'm a diabetic. Okay. Pauline, get me something sweet, please. A couple of chocolates out of the fridge there do it. Stop for anything, just let me know, okay? Okay. How were you disciplined at home? Well, with a bat side the head and a kick in the butt yeah. all at the same time. Okay. And what were your daily chores at home? Well, I lived with my grandfather and grandmother till I was about eight, nine years old. Just up here in the house that uh, I was born in. And they had uh, a cow and an oxen and uh, hens and stuff like that. So generally that was mature when I lived up there. Okay, after your chores were done, what would you do with your free time? Oh, run the woods, set rabbit snares, go trouting and all that stuff, you know. Okay, what was your favorite holiday when you were a child? I think it was in the summertime because... Or Christmas time, you know, what little bit we got. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, my God, that'll fetch my mo mojo up. Okay, we can take a break here. My God, you don't need no you fire in the stove and have the, 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 the same as you, you oh, ever have hot flashes? Well. <laughs> this would just say quite damn thing. Okay. What favorite pets do you remember having as a child? Oh, dogs and cats. One time I had a uh, billy goat I used to have on a sled, and he'd haul you if he didn't put you down through the woods or something or in the ditch. But he he, he was a good uh, a good name? friend. Uh, billy, we used to call him. Yeah. But we had the bobsleds and everything for him in the cart in the summertime. And, but he was a contrary thing. Okay, what was it like at your house when the catalog arrived, when the Sears catalog would come? Wish book. Oh, my God. 
you just look at it and wish you never could buy anything out of it much. <laughs> okay, where else did you get the things that you needed? Uh, what, like groceries? And well, like your clothes and stuff. Did your mother make them or? Well, a lot of them. A lot of them was handy, hand-me-downs, and I suppose a lot of the Eaton book, Simpson book, right. stuff like that. And How much spending money did you have as a child? <laughs> I never had very much. All my money went to feed the family. Okay. What was your religion? Well, I was Catholic, and then I ch uh, went to the Church of England church up here, or Protestant, whatever. Okay. What were Sundays like in your household when you were growing up? Well, it'd be the same as through the week, you know. Okay. Pretty well. How did you keep up with what was going on in the outside world? How did you get your news? Well, them days is pretty well from the, the radio and, and the older people. Like, they'd always listen to the news and uh, stuff like that at wartime and stuff. We had battery radios because there was no electricity down this road. And that's how you pretty well got what was going on. Okay, what did you grow and raise yourselves? What did your family grow and raise? Well, I always had a vegetable garden, potatoes, and you grow your own beef and, and live with grandfather and grandmother and hens and stuff like that, you know. Did you barter for anything? Like, did you trade, like, your vegetables for somebody's cow or something like that? I suppose at that time you would, you know. Like, you make butter when the Cow was give them lots of milk and salt it down. Eggs the same way. You salt your eggs and uh, different things, you know. Salt your eggs. I never heard tell of this, Gerald. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of forget now how they did it. If they boiled them, because I remember you used to have big crocks. Them days there's no buckets or anything, plastic buckets. So you'd have these great big earthen crocks. And that's what you'd salt your meat in and, uh, for winter and uh, your eggs and your butter, like, uh, you know. Stuff like that. How did electricity change things? Oh, a great deal. You know, of course, we was married four or five years before we got electricity up in the old house. And so we had to lug our water. And of course, we had gravity feed down to the house from the well, so that helped some. But your oil lamp, and if you get up in the middle of the night when you had babies, you had an oil lamp, you know, with the glass globe on it. Yeah. And then we had uh, like a little uh, wire, uh, wire cage that went down inside the lamp. So that's how you had, if you didn't have a fire on, that's how you had the baby's milk. So when the baby got up in the morning, they would be from sut, from the, the baby. <laughs> his lips would be all sooted and his hands where he held on to the bottle. But that was the only way, you know, that you'd get, get okay. him fed. When did you get running water? Well, that was a couple of years after we moved in the house there, and then we dug a well and got a pump after we got electricity and okay. stuff like that, hot water in the house. Stuff. What was bath night like when you were a child? Well, it was a wash tub, we used to call it, the big tub you used to wash in, so you'd heat water on the stove and and, uh, you know, jump in the, the tub. That's about all you had. Okay, who was the doctor when you were growing up? Well, it was Dr. Harris from down Weymouth, and uh, Dr. Dickey from town, and Dr. McCleave, and Dr. Lewis after. Okay. But they come from house to house for five or ten dollars, and, and half the time they never got it because everybody was poor, you know, but they was great people. Who delivered the babies in your community? Well, Dr. Harris, I imagine, and old Dr. Dickey, and uh, I suppose Lewis at, at the time. Okay, what were some home remedies that would have been common when you were growing up? Oh my God, don't mention that. Yeah. That was uh, onions and uh, ginger and molasses. 
Well, if you had a cold or if you was dying, one spoonful of that fetch you back because you didn't want to take another one. <laughs> So they they cook mix them all it. Together? Oh yeah, cook it on the stove. Cook it all together, and that was for your coals and uh, camphorated oil and mustard onto your chest or on your back into a flannel blanket. You know, a flannel right. rag or something like that. Don't you know, just smell good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. How did you take care of your teeth? Well, I don't think them days. Well, we brushed some, I guess, when toothbrushes come out or whatever, but. How often would you see a dentist? Well, whenever you had a toothache, it's a lot of people haul their own teeth out with yeah. pliers, you know, them days. And okay, so how often did you get to leave Marshalltown? Yeah. Well, not not too often at that time, you know. It was the old Model A cars and stuff, you know. And probably go to town if you want to go. Digby, well, it's five miles away, you'd walk or run, whatever, when you was young. Okay, what were the roads like? Well, it was quite narrow. I can remember when they paved from Halifax to Yarmouth, like down here. And this here road here, this was always dirt road, but this was a, at one time, was a stagecoach road. Just up the road here, on top of the hill house, is tore down now. At first, I think. It was a stagecoach stop. They had a huge burn where they changed horses, but I can't remember that, but I heard the old timers. And then it was a poor farm before they built this one down here, down Foot the Hill Lane here, yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. I remember the barn in the big house. It was a huge big house. I suppose, you know, they could stay there overnight or uh, and then it turned into like a poor farm, and then they built the one down here to foot the lane, so. Okay, who would look after the roads? Who the road? would have to shovel them and things like that? Well, I can remember, it, we'd have so much snow here, we'd be, the only thing you get through would be an ox and a horses, and then when the cars come, like they'd all get together and shovel it out by hand, because there was no snow, well, there was a snow plow after a while, but only one snowplow for the whole country, right. you know. So uh, if you wanted to get out, I can remember up here in the lane, there used to be a fellow named Woody, and he just lived up there a little bit, and he was cooking to the base. And that's not really been that long ago. And he got stuck down in there, yes. and he stayed. These cars stayed there all winter, and they, the fellows in the poor farm, used to come get the mail. The post office was in that same big house I was talking about. Right. And my God, they was walking right over the car and didn't even know it was there. There was that much snow. I suppose eight, ten feet of snow in that lane. So they had nothing to break it out. So his car stayed there to spring until they could see it and went and shoveled it out after a while. But uh, we used to have a lot of snow. Okay, what did you expect to do when you grew up? Well, anything I could do to make a dollar, you know. Okay. Labor, most of it, hard labor. Okay, so as a teenager, what kinds of things did you do for fun? Well, I'm going to tell you, I never had too much fun as a teenager. So I was all time working pretty well, but it was, uh, you know, after I got on my own, it was a little better. Uh, who was your, who were your movie idols? Well, years ago it was uh, Roy Rogers and Tom Mix and. Uh, Gene Autry, and you'd run around the road through the week and try to get 10, 12 bottles. I think it was 12 cents and go to the show. So you get some beer bottles and uh, take them up here to Miss Drew's to the end of the road here. And then you get your 12, 14, 15 cents, whatever you had, and then you'd run to town to see the show. The old Bajo or... The Bajo, what was that? Uh, that was up there where the dry cleaners was. Is that a movie theater? Yeah. That's what it was called, the Bijo. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And then the, the, the other one down there was called uh, Capital Theater. Oh, yeah. Okay. What kind of music do you like? Did you like? Oh, you? country and western. Yeah. Okay. What sport, what kind of sports did you enjoy? I was never into sports or anything like that. Played a little baseball and stuff. You know, uh, Sting and Miss, whatever they called it. Do you remember about dating? Well, sometimes that was quite interesting, but uh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, 
Just the big picture, not the little picture. Never picture. had much time for girls till I was 18, 19, 20 years old. How far did you go in school? Grade four. And why did you leave school? I only had to go to work. Okay. How old were you when you left school? I was 11, 12 years old. Okay. So once you left school, what did you do? Went to work. Okay. You know. At home? Or you went working out in... Well, anywhere I could get a job. I was up Big Lake. I think I was 12 years old up there driving a pair of horses. And I was four or five miles up the lake, and the only way you could get up there, well, we had a boat, but uh, uh, we used to take the horses through the woods, and there was no roads or anything, so a span of horses, so you'd take one, and the other one would come behind, so you'd have to, that one there would go down through the woods, so you'd have to tie the first one you had by the neck and uh, go down and get the other one, and then you'd go up the lake, and God, I was up there all alone, they, you know, like hauling logs at the horses for two years there, and I really enjoyed that. Had a nice big house across the lake, they used to call it the Dingle. And the, the Dingle, that's what they called it, and it had big fireplace into it, hardwood floors, it was beautiful, you know. Lots of deer meat, and lots of toast to eat. And <laughs> okay, now I'm getting into your adult life, Gerald. How did you meet your wife? Well, I guess we used to a dance or something in on the cannon banks. You remember that dance hall used to be there? I remember the building, but I don't remember. Yeah, the yeah. Well, I used to be a. They used to have dances here every Saturday night. Place would be full. So, how old were you when you got married? I was twenty, twenty-one, I think. Okay. Okay. Once you were married, where did you live? Just up the road here, where I was born. Okay. Okay, what year? Oh no, sorry. What year did you start your first job as an adult? Well, I suppose I was about. Well, I was twelve years old, around eleven, twelve years old. Okay, you know. And what was that job? Well, in the woods, cutting wood and okay. pick and shovel, whatever. You know, so whatever you want to. Who were you working for then, Gerald? Well, I. I used to work for Chester Keene and Horace Frazier there in Bear River and Lloyd McNeil up the road here and Lloyd Jefferson and uh, anywhere I could get a job, Harold Sims in the woods. Okay. And so how did your work change with the seasons, that job? Well, generally in the wintertime I'd work like in the woods after I got 14, 15, 16 years old and in the summertime I worked in the National Fish in there. I worked in there for quite a few years. Okay, how dangerous was your work? Well, just, you know, it was quite dangerous, like uh, twitching logs with horses and stuff like that, and cutting in the woods, trees, and stuff like that. And luckily, you, you watch what you do and you never get hurt too much. Once in a while, something fall on you or something, but... Okay, what was your salary when you started that job? Well, a dollar a day, two dollars a day board yourself three dollars a day you know how much tax did you have to pay out of that oh, I can't remember paying no taxes out of, you know really that it's okay. what just, do you remember about the depression well I'm going to tell you till I was 25 30 years old everything was a depression <laughs> it was from hand to mouth and that's about all yeah. Okay, what do you remember about wartime? Well, I can remember quite a bit about it. You know, a lot of the boys here going overseas and stuff like that, you know. Were you ever in the war? No, no, I was too young. Okay, what effect did the war have on Marshalltown? Well, I, I suppose it's, for quite a few years, it's about the same as you know, everybody was trying to scratch out a living because everybody was about in the same boat. Right. <clears throat> okay, how did people help each other out in days gone by that's different from now? 
like, do you find that the people were much more willing to come together as a group and help each other than what they do today? Well, yes, but I have no problems that way. If I'm doing anything, there's seven native from around here. We're all the same. We just jump in, and uh, now last year I sing more often. Start to put the staging up. The first thing they seven, eight, ten fellers here, That's and uh, you know the roof went on so fast that uh, you'd and stuff like that. You know, I always got good friends around here. Okay, Gerald. Can you, what do you remember about the poor farm? And I know you've already told me a little bit. But can you well, I can remember quite a bit of it. You know, like the people down there we used to know and stuff like that, and the caretakers and stuff like that. You know, they they got pretty well looked after down there, pretty good. They always had their own gardens and and their own vegetables and their beef and pigs to kill and stuff like that, you know, they... But you think pretty well the pe the inmates at the poor farm, they were treated as well as anybody could have been? Uh, I would say, because most of them fellas went there, lived somewhere else with somebody, it worked for none, and used like dogs. And when they got sick, or they couldn't look after themselves or do the work, that's where they ended up. I see. So, you know what I mean? Some of them people went there, was used. I mean, if you wouldn't use a dog like some of them was used. I ain't mentioned no names, yeah. but I could. Yeah. But uh, it, it was terrible. It was terrible. Even in what I remember of them, you know. So how important were politics in days gone by than today? Oh, oh, it was worse, worse than it is today. My God, they get to the polls up here, and I don't know every place is like that. But see, if you go vote, they give you a pint of rum or, or whatever, and they get drinking. The first thing <laughs> they'd be in tour hour right out in the road, hammer and tong at it. Oh boy, I'm telling you, politics. Them. Well, another thing, like politics, there wasn't much work around, so. Whatever was in you, get a little work on the road or something like that, you know, and they pretty well went for that. Okay, so do you think a person would have got work depending on how he voted? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. They get a little work on the road with their horses or oxen or, you know, pick and shovel and stuff like that was a, was a good thing, you know. They could uh, buy a bag of flour or whatever, and different things like that. Can you describe or tell me what Marshalltown looked like when you were growing up? Were there any stores out here or anything like that? Yeah, we had a store right up top of the hill here, Ralph Marshalls. That was, and then Sam Woodman's would be the next one. There was a gas station up there on the corner, just the other side of the overpass of the railroad track, the other side of Jim yeah. Cow Pines, before they put the road down through there. But he had a store there and a gas station and uh, stuff. He was a nice old fellow. He used to go up there and he'd tell us stories and stuff. Big man, big man. How was the law enforced in Marshalltown? Well, in days, there wasn't anything to enforce. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, uh, they was the odd fellow would uh, probably bootleg a little bit or get a deer out of season, but uh, nobody paid, paid attention to that. Everybody was meek and mild in days. It ain't like today. Okay, when would people get together for a good time in Marshalltown? Well, but the only good times I remember in Marshalltown was right here on top of the hill every night. In the summertime, they'd be 25, 30, all gather here on top of the hill and talk and make a bonfire if it was cold. Down here on the corner was another place we all gathered as young people, you know, talked and stuff. Uh, okay, do you remember anything about tourists coming to Marshalltown when you were little? Not too, not too much. The only ones you'd see is if they went from here to the States or stuff, you know, they come back to visit. That's about all. I can't remember too many tourists being around. I suppose in Digby they would be, I guess years and years ago they used to come from Boston in steamers, boats, and then come up on a train and, you know, stuff like that, but, uh, Okay, how superstitious were people when you were growing up? 
quite superstitious. Can you tell me some of the superstitions? Would you know any of that? Well, they'd uh, tell you about uh, ghosts and stuff they've seen, and uh, down on the corner this was supposed to be haunted, and different places around, you know. The old folks would make the hair come right up on the back of your neck sometimes, <laughs> but, uh, you know, stuff like that. What is the worst weather that you can remember? Uh, well, most of it would be in the summertime, or in the wintertime, you know, the snow we used to have used to be blocked in, stuff like that, you know, but we, we didn't mind that. You always get out. God, in other places you get six inches of snow, they're in there for a month, but here we just get out and shovel it out and keep on going. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember any ghost stories from your younger years that you could tell me? Well, not well. I just heard a lot, but I forget about them now, you know, a lot of stories. Remember any, do you remember Maude Lewis? Oh yeah, very well. Can you tell me anything about Maude, what she looked like or anything like that? Well, we, we used to stop in there as kids in Everett. Me and Everett used to hunt a lot back, back at the poor farm, back in that area. And that old bugger, he catch me every time with a gun, but I never could catch him with a gun. And he'd look at me and he'd say, Jerry, you getting some meat out of season there, yeah? And he'd catch me every time. Of course, I'd be going with my head down. See, he'd probably see me coming. He'd hide behind a tree or something, step right out in front of me. But Everett was a nice old fellow. He'd never tell on you or anything like that, you know, because he knowed what hard times was. Right. It's that rabbit's nerves and stuff back in there. So what about Maude, though, Gerald? I'm really more interested. Well, she was, she was a nice lady. She always, when you went by there, if uh, Everett was around, we used to stop in. We never win much if Everett wasn't around. You know, but uh, but they both like kids, did they not? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Everett was uh, Everett was, would talk to you for hours, and so would she. She used to carry the mail. She'd go up to the store and get a pack of cigarettes or go get the mail. And I remember she used to have a great big old fur coat on in the winter time, and she'd be coming down to call her up around her neck, you know, and stuff. And she was awful nice. I heard a story yesterday that Ma had a child. Did you know anything yeah, about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's down in, see, she's from Yarmouth. Right. And uh, I think is still living, but she called, the way I understand, she called, or somebody called, and uh, she didn't want nothing to do with it. But I suppose it's on account of effort and, right. you know. But then people, uh, what I mean, they was poor all their life and they tried to survive, you know, okay. stuff like One that. One last question, Gerald. How would you compare life in general today to days gone by? The way I compare it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's just about like day and night. Now I'm retired. I work for the CN for 34 years. I get a little pension and stuff. And uh, if I don't want to do anything, I don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> years ago, you had to get up and work two or three jobs sometimes to try to make a living. Okay, but the, but the values that you had as a child, were they better than what the values that children have today? Oh my God, yes. Jesus, why children today, if they can't get a new Trans Am car or something every other day, they don't want anything, you know? <laughs> we was lucky to get a jackknife or, you know, or something like that, or a new pair of sneaker boots. But God, today they want so much. Do you know how Marshalltown got its name? Well, I think it's because the way I look at it, at the marshals, there was quite a few marshals up the road, which is pretty well all gone off now, you know. And yeah, everybody's I've heard that many times. moved in. Like I call them immigrants, as they move in, move right in on you. So oh, yeah. they're immigrants. Yeah. <laughs> but they're all nice people. All nice people. Anything else you'd like to say, or? No, not Thanks. really. Okay. Well, that was good, Gerald. Thoroughly enjoyed it.